Hello and a warm welcome to Personal Finance. I'm Gugule Tukele. While South African contemporary art is a rising trend in 2016 as a luxury collectible together as an investment vehicle, especially in a time when the falling rand means people are turning to more reliable or alternative investment options. To tell us more about how consumers can access this investment opportunity is Anton Waltz, who's an auctioneer at Stefan uh, Waltz & Co. Thank you so much for joining us today, uh, Anton, and uh, such a great pleasure to speak to you. Perhaps let's paint a picture firstly about the uh, auctioneering climate when it comes to collectibles uh, uh, and this kind of artwork that we're talking about, contemporary art. What fulfills that particular definition and what are the trends like in South Africa with regard to uh, auctioneering? We like to determine or define contemporary art as, as art that's made by obviously living artists or artists that... Uh, last quarter of the probably the 20th century so somebody like Robert Hodgins who died in 2010 is considered as a contemporary artist as is William Kentridge who's probably the the greatest living South African artist certainly in the contemporary field um, from an auction perspective we only hold three auctions a year in Cape Town and three in Johannesburg so we have almost little snapshots of, of, of what the market is doing during the course of a year and it's interesting to track the the growth and interest in contemporary art I, I think largely because there's a there's a growing market of, of younger investors and collectors and also because contemporary work often is, is work on paper and work on paper are less expensive than works on canvas. Uh, it provides a, an easier uh, point of entry for a collector and uh, it's not quite as expensive having to buy a work on canvas by, by an established artist. Mm. I'm happy you touched on some of the trends that you're able to monitor over the time when you do have the auctions taking place across South Africa, but from a local perspective versus what our global peers are doing, how do we measure up as South Africa? Again, I think there's been there's been a growing interest in, in contemporary African art uh, from a continental perspective. Certainly, we, you, you see a, a an art fair like Freeze 54 in London and, and the Dubai Art Fair showcasing art across the continent. So the African art is probably lagging behind a little bit uh, in terms of our exposure to the international market and I think that would, would certainly help in, in, in making it a good buy because I think it's probably undervalued in relation to some of the, the art that's, that's coming out of Nigeria or Angola or Ghana for argument's sake where, where it, th there seems to be more traction with artists from, from that part of the world but uh, I think we're probably still a little bit undervalued. What about currency fluctuations? We've seen the rand depreciating against the dollar quite significantly over the last year. Does this play an element when it comes to uh, auctioneering of uh, contemporary art? I don't think so much from a, fr fr from a local perspective. In terms of local buyers, I think that, uh, that local buyers are earning in rands and they're spending in rands. It, it's uh, a different story entirely if you're going to collect art from, 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 other, from other countries in Africa, but uh, it certainly makes it very, very affordable and attractive for, for overseas buyers. Mm -hmm. Well, let's come back to home and uh, touch on the exciting part of the conversation now. For someone who wants to invest in contemporary art, where do you begin? Which artist does one need to look out for? And how do you get in touch with uh, uh, getting appropriate valuations on the particular artwork you want? When, when it comes to artists, there, there is an enormous range to choose from. And, and I, I, would, I would probably suggest that if somebody wanted to, to begin investing and learning about uh, contemporary art, I would think visit the galleries for starters um, and there are a lot of very very good galleries both in Johannesburg and in Cape Town who, who, who showcase some of the finest work by, uh, by young contemporary South African artists and then by the same token get into the auction houses take a look at our website go look at back uh, back catalogues of work that that's been on the on the market if you find an artist in whom you're interested Pull his name into our into our search engine. Have a look and see his results over the last five or six years, and begin to track the artist's value in the secondary market and see just how he retains value. Uh, educate yourself. Talk to specialists. Talk to gallerists, and learn what you like and why you like it. Uh, again, it's art is something that it's. Not, I don't necessarily say it's a great place to invest money you've got to like what you buy so if you don't like it don't buy it there's nothing worse than waking up in the morning and looking at something hanging on the wall and thinking oh my god I spent a fortune on that and I hate it mm. just on the value though who determines the worth of the collectible art 
I think auction is is probably a very good barometer because it is it, it it's a free transparent process. So if there are two or three or four bidders and uh, they argue out a, a a price, then they establish a value for that artist in the secondary market, and that's and that's probably a very fair market related value. Um, as an example, let's take the Nelson Macamo, he young artist living in Johannesburg. Uh, we had a picture of his on our on our auction in October last year. We put an estimate of eighty to one hundred thousand, I think, on the on the work. It sold for two hundred and fifty thousand. Mm. Fabulous work, um, attracted a lot of attention, and the market responded accordingly. That's not the only example you can allude to. I understand there's uh, one referred to as Arc uh, Procession Two as well, which uh, saw a, a formidable uh, uh, auctioneering take place there. Walk us through some of these examples and uh, uh, the surprising outcome that led to this. If one takes an artist like William Kentridge for argument's sake, there's always going to be interest around his work. You know, he he, he works in so many different mediums. He's a complete master of of, of his craft, uh, and and uh, always is always going to attract attention in the in the secondary market. Um, to to name a handful of artists is almost impossible. Uh, to name values artists who, who perhaps give good value, uh, I'd. I'd say somebody, for argument's sake, like Bambo Sabia. He won the uh, Absa Latelier Award, did a residency in Paris, uh, works on paper, and uh, has certainly grown as an artist over the last three or four years. So he, I, I think he's somebody to watch, somebody who's providing very good value and somebody whose who's work should appreciate over the next five or ten years. Mm. Anton, uh, you mentioned earlier on in the conversation that you need to make sure you like what you're buying before just purchasing it purely for the investment return. But if we do look at the calculations with regard to investment return uh, uh, as an example when it comes to collectible art, what kind of rates are we looking at here and how long is the investment outlook? There was a survey done last year and there was a comparison done between different classes or c classes of collectibles. Collectible cars turned out to be the best investment over the last five years. I think that, that they'd increased in value 253% on average. Uh, art was 245%. Furniture had gone backwards 14%. So, and, and, and we can get quite, quite specific. So if you're talking about collectible classes, they're talking about 19th century, what we call brown furniture. So the mahogany walnut furniture that, that, that our parents and our grandparents had has gone backwards over the last five years in value. Collectible cars have increased significantly in value, and and art seems to have held its own. Um, that's based on an international on international market figures, uh, because the contemporary market in in Europe and America has exploded over the last over the last five years. Africa is a little bit slower, and uh, we're taking a bit of time to catch up. We don't necessarily have artists like a Mark Rothko or a or a Roy Lichtenstein whose whose works go into the tens of millions of dollars. Mm. For someone who does go to an auction and picks up a few of these assets uh, for both investment purposes and for the love of art, what about the protection of these particular valuable items? Are there insurance products available potentially? Yes, there are. Um, there is an auction house, uh, I beg your pardon, there is a, there, there's an insurance house, uh, if I may mention the name. Uh, art insurers specifically deal with um, the insurance of art and collectibles uh, and it's their it's their field uh, they specialize in it and uh, they take care of the, they take care of insuring art and collectibles at the right values for those who might be novice uh, auctioneers or attending uh, auctions are there particular terms and conditions and hidden costs that they also need to be aware of in terms of I don't think there are any hidden costs. All auction houses operate on, on, on very much the same basis. There will be a buyer's premium payable on the hammer price. Uh, again, I, uh, it's, it's clearly stipulated in the terms and conditions. So typically, uh, it, it, it's, it's around about 14% on, on uh, items selling above 10,000 Rand. That is applicable only on that uh, commission portion, not on the total price. So if you spend 100,000 Rand, you're going to pay an extra 14,000 Rand in buyer's premium and VAT on that 14,000 Rand. But the process is entirely transparent. There is no other hidden cost to the, to the buyer. <music> We've certainly said quite a bit when it comes to uh, understanding uh, the uh, auctioneering perspective when it comes to uh, collectible art. But uh, Anton, perhaps if you can give us a few key takeaway points from tonight's discussion for those investors who might be keen on entering this uh, uh, perhaps elitist point of uh, departure when it comes to artwork. Don't say, don't say elitist. I think the I think the important part about about an auction is to is to almost demystify that elitist process. I mean. You, 
you can pick up a really good work of art for under 5,000 rand. It's not, it's not all the, the, uh, the, the hundreds of thousand rands that, that, that I think we shout about. I think all auction houses like to talk about the really successful items or the really expensive items that they sell, but there's a lot of very good value to be had uh, at, at a lower price point. But in terms of, in terms of pointers, I think um, when it comes to collecting art, in, in, when it comes to collecting anything from, from an auction perspective, take advice. So consult the specialists who are, who are going to be on hand at the auction house, whatever the field is, whether it's silver, art, collectibles, regardless of the field, consult with the specialist, ask their opinion. They're only going to give you bad advice once. So that's, that, that's the first important point. Um, second thing is educate yourself. Go to the galleries, look at old catalogues, um, learn more about the artist. When, when, when was his best period? When was he, well, how prolific was he? What mediums did he work in? So educate yourself so that you know what you're going to buy. Then love what you buy. Again, don't necessarily buy it thinking it's going to show a great return. Buy it because you like it. Uh, I think that's, that's probably the most, the most important uh, uh, message when it comes, when it comes to, uh, to collecting. Um, and ask for a condition report. Ask for the, for the condition of, of whatever it is. If, if it's a work on paper, what the condition is. Uh, if it's a work on canvas, has, is the, has the painting been damaged? Is the, is the paint lifting? Are there restorations? Has something been done to the work? So, so really, really do your homework on, on what you want to buy. To sidestep for a moment, and just before we wrap up our conversation, Anton, uh, a key question that a lot of consumers always ask us is regarding the tax implications uh, upon purchasing or either selling uh, collectible art. Are there any uh, costs yes. that need to be that we need to be aware of here? No. Uh, effectively, when you when you come into auction, you're selling secondhand goods. That's really <laughs> that's really the long and the short of it. So there is no capital gains tax uh, applicable to, to to fine art when you're selling on auction. Thank you so much for your time today, Anton. You've certainly educated myself and the nation when it comes to uh, auctioneering collectible artwork. And that's where we'll leave it for personal finance this evening. A big thank you once more to my guests joining us from our Cape Town studios, Anton Waltz, who's a auctioneer with Stefan Waltz and Co. Now do remember that you too can participate in the conversation and tell us if you are lover of art and have managed to make quite a significant return on your investment thereof. You can tweet any of your comments to at CNBC Africa using the hashtag finance 410 or to myself at Kukumfupi on Twitter. Until next time, we wish you a wonderful evening.